सो हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू चैनल गेट टू वाइट वंस अगेन इन द सीरीज ऑफ द वीडियोस ऑफ टाइमर इनपुट कैप्चर पेरिफेरल आई हैव इन द लास्ट वीडियो स्टार्टेड विद द बेयर मेटल कोडिंग ऑफ द टाइमर पेरिफेरल इन विच आई हैव एंडेड विद द कॉन्फ़िगरेशंस इन विच आई हैव टू टेल यू अबाउट द कॉन्फ़िगरेशंस ऑफ द चैनल 1 एंड चैनल 2 ओके फॉर द पीडब्ल्यूएम इनपुट मोड सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दैट एंड ओनली एंड वी आर गोइंग टू कंप्लीट अ बेयर मेटल कोड So now, without wasting time, let's get started. So now, in the process of the channel configurations. the first thing that we will have to do is that we will disable the each of the chan the channels which we are using because we will be configuring the before configuring that which channel is config is connected to the which pin and what are its pre scalar value and what is its polarity so first thing that we will do is like we are uh, we will i am first configuring the ic1 channel one so cc er register in the cc1 e bit will be setting the capture enabled or disabled So setting that bit as zero. Now next thing that we will be going to set is the CCMR1 register, from which we will set that which channel is connected to the which pin. That is CCMR1 and the CC1S. So this bits will uh, will configure that which channel selection, which channel will be config connected to the which external pin. So channel one is configured as input and IC1 is mapped on TI1. So CC one as bits has to be set as zero one, okay, and that's what I have done over these two steps. Then next thing is that CC ER register, CC R uh, yeah, CC ER register. It would uh, uh, yeah, EP sorry EP CC in the CC ER register. Like uh, we are going to now configure the polarity of the channel. That is. Whether it would be inverted or non-inverted, the channel one it would be our non-inverted that is capture will be done on the rising edge in the channel one, and on the uh, so that's all. And then in the end we will just set the prescaler values in the input polarity or uh, this I input capture filter and the prescaler values if we are using anything. But in our case we will be using no filter and no prescaler, so both of these values are set as zero. Now the same procedure will go for channel two configuration also. First, we will disable the channel. Then we will set that which pin or uh, is this channel configured to. So CC two S is configured as input and it is mapped on T I one internally. So it is set as one zero and as it is what I have done over these two steps. Then configuring the polarity of the channel two that is CC two P. CC two P would be uh, having the inverted. That is now channel two would be sampling the lower signal, falling edge signal. So channel one high rising edge and channel two lower edge. So complete signal would be complete. Uh, the complete uh, the one digital signal half bandwidth would be uh, we would uh, counter values we would like to, we would get to know. And then IPSC and the input polar filters are set as zero. Okay, and that's all that we have to do mainly in the timer input capture. configuration now the next thing that we have to do is to capture like a uh, like in this uh, in the configuration of channel 1 and channel 2 we have just uh, configured it okay we have not enabled chapter uh, channel 1 or not disabled not enable the channel 2 so for that we i have created a separate functions timer for channel or capture configuration and timer for channel capture and configuration so in this now what we have to do that whenever channel 1 will get any rising edge as i have set it as non inverted polarity so we have to enable its interrupt okay so that our interrupt handler can be invoked so that is what i that's what we we are going to do in the dier register dms slash interrupt enable register so for the timer for channel 1 okay So channel one would be our in this the interrupt be invoked, okay. 
So whenever channel one would get a rising edge, so its interrupt will be invoked, and that's why I have said DIS DIS CC one IE chapter capture or compare interrupt enabled. Now CC ER in this, as I have told you, in the CC ER register, it will enable my uh, capture. Okay. So that's what I have done in the CCR enable the capture. CC one E is set to one. Okay. And then CC ER. The channel 2 is also now set to, is enabled and then in timer is enabled. So by this, my this cha channel 1, channel 2 will be enabled. They would start capturing the external signal. And this is the unconfiguration. Okay, so in this I have un like interrupts are set to 0, CC1 e and 2 both are enabled and timer is also disabled. Okay. So these are the main three functions. Okay, now next comes that as I told you, we are using the interrupt. Our interrupt will be invoked. Okay, when a channel one uh, capture is being held, held on channel one. Okay, so this is the interrupt handler that I have written. Now I will just explain you this interrupt handler in a very quick manner. Now the, I have declared these variables. I see one value, channel one, uh, the time x, cc, r1 value, time x, cc, r2 will be stored at here, frequency, duty cycle, period, and width of parameters that I have to calculate. Now, timer for interrupt handler will be invoked only when my timer one, uh, channel, timer for channel one interrupt is enabled and when some rising edge is detected on the channel one. So, as and when we will get some rising edge CC1F in the status register. If you will see the status register, let me just navigate you to the status register. Yeah. So, CC1F bit will be set as 1. Okay. Uh, if channel 1 is configured as input, the counter value has been captured in CCR1 register. So, it, that means that uh, my CC1F will be set to 0 and that is what I am uh, using as a condition. So if CC1 is set to 1, that means my capture compare event has occurred on channel 1. Now I am checking that whether my interrupt is enabled for the ch channel 1. Okay. If it is enabled, then I will uh, log the value of time4 underscore CCR1 into this variable IC1. Okay. Cross check if input capture is enabled. If there is no input, is there. Okay. And then if IC value is not equal to 0, that is my rising edge has been detected. Then IC2 value, that is falling edge value will be stored at the IC2. And now frequency is calculated upon this by the, this formula as this is 1000 upon IC1 value. And duty cycle is equal to the IC2 value into 100 upon IC1 value. And period and the width are so and so forth. Okay. So now these are the main functions and the interrupt handler, uh, how you have to write. Okay. And in the dot H file, header file, I have written these four functions. Timer for channel pin configuration, then input capture configuration, and then the, this step capture configuration and unconfiguration. Okay. So that's all that you have to write in these two header files. Okay. Now in the main function is very, uh, it's also very simple and not so like just a basic one in which I have first initialized my timer for input capture. Okay. And then I have set the, uh, like uh, set the global uh, NVIC interrupt functions for setting the priority and enabling the interrupt handler of my timer for. Okay. And then in the while loop, I have done this using a mailish function staying in while function for uh, four seconds for four seconds my timer for channel will be captured configured okay and then for the remaining four seconds it will be not configured okay so now if i just a second yeah so yeah now let me just make this program run okay so now this is the code and i have debugged now and putting it in a debug uh, mode now when I enable this, okay, so yeah, okay, let me, now as if now my program is running, but frequency, duty, cycle, and period, all of these values are zero. I am just key oning uh, on my, this oscilloscope, which is outputting the signal at 10 hertz, 10 megahertz, okay, 10 kilohertz, sorry. So that is what approximately my values are, duty cycle is 50, period and width are correspondingly. Now I am changing my this duty cycle okay to 60 
so you can see my duty cycle is also 60 now 70 i have changed now i have changed it to 90 percent so it is 90 now i am changing the frequency okay now frequency i am setting it to 20 kilohertz that is what approximately is and my duty cycle is 80 that is what approximately is so you can see that i am fully able to configure the frequency duty period and the width depending upon my external signal and that is how we can write the very basic and the simple timer input capture mode uh, bare metal code so i hope guys you get to know about some things in this video and you like the video i know the video might be very something very long it is very it has a very long so i will just I will also write the blog on these two on this topic so you can stay updated on the channel and my get to buy website for any suggestions any views kindly tell me on the below comment section and do mention your views till then see you in the next video and bye and don't forget to subscribe to the get to buy channel so that's it for now like the video subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get notified for new videos and share it with your friends